Hi everyone and welcome back to National 5 Biology. Today we're going to finish off Unit 2 Multicellular Organisms by looking at key area 7, which is absorption of materials. This is a really short key area with only a few things that we need to look over that are actually quite similar, um, so hopefully this won't take too long. So first of all, we're going to be looking briefly at the lungs. So you'll probably have seen a structure like this before off the lungs. We're going to concentrate on the, the main components of it. First of all, you have a trachea that comes down. Next, splits into a bronchus, and the bronchus itself then splits up into different bronchioles. These little bits are starting to look like trees that come off. At the end of all these bronchioles are little air sacs that are called alveoli. So there's loads of them there that you can see already, and obviously it's a very simplified diagram, but the alveoli are what we are going to concentrate on. This is what you need to know for your National 5. So make sure you're comfortable with this diagram, and let's have a little look at the alveoli. So the diagram at the top right is showing the alveoli in terms of how they look. There are these kind of air sacs uh, that are this little shape here and surrounded by capillaries that go around them. Okay, if you've had a look at transporting animals just before this video, hopefully you can tell what's going on here is deoxygenated blood, so blood with no oxygen, is coming across the alveoli, which are part of the lungs, so that they can pick up oxygen. They're picking up oxygen to come oxygenated blood, which is eventually going to go around the body. But for this key here, we're looking at how this actually works. So oxygen is breathed into the lungs and is passed onto the blood, whereas waste carbon dioxide is passed from the blood to the lungs, where it is breathed out. That's the whole process that is working just all the time when we're breathing and when our blood is flowing through our body. So let's have a look at how the alveoli is actually good at doing this. Because you just need to know that the alveoli is the site of gas exchange in the lungs. That's what its sole purpose is. That is what it's there for, but what makes it good at it. So, first thing we're going to look at is thin lining. The lining of these alveoli is very, very thin. If you think about when we looked at capillaries in the previous key area, we talked about the importance of having very thin walls so that gas can quickly diffuse through it. The same is totally true of the alveoli. Very thin lining so that gas can move and can diffuse across it. Next, alveoli have a large surface area. Human lungs contain around 500 million alveoli. If you think of these alveoli being little sacs, all of those sacs have a large surface area. If you think about 500 million of them, that is a huge amount of surface area for gas to diffuse. So all of these are crammed into our lungs, around our structures, off our bronchioles, and it's there so that we have this large surface area for gas, carbon dioxide and oxygen, to move back and forth. Okay? And the last thing that the alveoli they have that make them very good at their job of gas exchange is that they have a good blood supply. They have a very good blood supply. They have these dense capillary networks around every single one of these 500 million or so alveoli, which means that large volumes of gas can be exchanged. It's a very quick and very efficient process. So you need to know the alveoli are the site of gas exchange at the lungs, and they have a thin lining, a large surface area, and a good su blood supply, which makes them very good at their job. And go into a bit of detail there. The next bit we're going to look at is the small intestine. So we're moving away from the lungs now, and we're going into our digestive system. But again, we don't need to have a lot of detail about this. We're going to be looking at the absorption part. So if you think once food has been digested mechanically, and it's chemically as well, once this process has went on, its nutrients need to be absorbed, and that is the point of these intestines. So we're going to be looking at the small intestine, and they have little structures called villi, or a single one is a villus that aids absorption. So similar to alveoli, we're going to be looking at one structure, but there's actually millions of these. They are all around the small intestines. There are these little finger-like projections that come out, in case you saw a diagram of them. And this is what the structure looks like. There are three parts to the villus or the villi that make them very good at absorbing any of the food or any of the nutrients that we're looking at. First of all, it's exactly the same as alveoli, it's thin walls. The thin walls in the villus or the villi allow the food to be absorbed quickly and easily. Again, it's got a thin wall, it could just move through it. That's fairly straightforward and it's this uh, highlighted in purple uh, wall structure on the outside of this villus. The second thing, again, is very, very similar to the alveoli. It's got blood capillaries, it's a rich blood supply, it has this network of blood capillaries around the villus. The additional thing you need to know for the villus though, is that this, these blood capillaries, 
they, uh, their main function is to absorb amino acids and glucose. So you could be asked, what is this part? For example, here you can see the uh, blood capillaries are put in red. What is this part? What's it called? What does it absorb? It's a blood capillary. The reason is there is to provide a rich blood supply to aid absorption in the villus, and it absorbs amino acids and glucose. The last part we're looking at is the bit in the middle, so I've highlighted it in yellow this time. This part of the, the villus is called the lacteal. What the lacteal does is that absorbs the products of fat digestion, so fatty acids and glycerol. The way I try and remember this is if you think of uh, lactose and milk, and people tend to think of the sort of uh, fatty parts of milk, lacteal and lactose, it's not biologically fantastically accurate, but it's just a way of trying to get it into your head. There's got the lacteal, we've got blood capillaries, and we've got thin walls. So just like the alveoli and just like smaller parts of the course, you need to know what they look like, so you can uh, label any of this diagram. You need to know what they do and what makes them good at this structure. So remember, you've got your thin walls, you have your blood capillaries, and you have your lacteal. So go through this, make sure you have that diagram and you know what's going on there. And that is it. That's absorption of materials. It's a very, very short key area. Um, you'll notice as well the alveoli and the villus are similar in some ways, so hopefully that makes it a bit easier to learn. But make sure you just know about uh, the purpose of absorption, the purpose of these structures and what they do and what makes them good at it, and you'll be totally fine with any question that you could ask. So for you, those of you who have been following this from the start, thank you so, so much for listening to these. I really, really appreciated all your comments and all your feedback. Um, it, it's been great, and I really hope it's helped some of you out. If you have been following it from the start, I know we've done it in a strange order, but that is now the whole of National 5 covered. So hopefully you can go through it, uh, work through it, and this will help you out in your revision for the exam. I'm also going to get on some more quizzes. I know some of you have been asking for them. I'm a bit behind for that. I really do apologise for it. And also get on some more problem solving videos. Once I've done that, the plan is then to uh, make the same thing again, um, hopefully make it a bit better this time, and make it for higher. So if you're a new listener, uh, thanks so much for listening and hope this works well to you. You'll need to move on to Unit 3 now. If you've been following from the start, thank you so, so much for all your comments. I really, really appreciate it. And very, very best of luck for the exam. Thanks again.